Hello everybody, I am Tom and you are watching me play Divinity Original Sin 2. Um, apologies for my voice, you probably noticed it in yesterday's episode as well, but I'm actually quite sick. So my voice is weird and more nasally than usual. Um, again, apologies for that, but there's not a whole lot I can do about it. Uh, first things first, today I want to go talk to Loha, um, who is the leader of the sort of gang of dwarves, as it were. But, in the last episode, we actually gained the ability to see ghosts. And it just so happens, I believe Losa can do it too. She can indeed. But it just so happens... That if we come down here, we know where there are a bunch of bodies that we can ch check out. And where there are bodies, no doubt there are spirits. Down by this caravan. Maybe I had to get a bit more insight into what actually happens if we can talk to some of these ghosts. There we go, there are ghosts nearby. Ghosts may linger anywhere there are unfinished business, cast spirit vision regularly to find them. Ghosts. Doubled over in agony, the shivering magister spirit mumbles to himself, tightly clutching three golden stalks in one fist. Noting the attention, he straightens, revealing insignia spelling Kinnit, and a jagged wound spilling his innards upon the ground. He reaches a ghostly hand into your chest and squeezes your heart. Allow the touch, sense his source pumping through your heart. You become Kinnit, his memories flooding over you and replacing your own. Warmth, comfort, you are Kinnit, playing cards with your mates in a cozy barracks. You stagger to tipsy attention as a white-clad magister commands that one of your troop seek a lost caravan. It's a one-man job. A job no man wants. Your sly-eyed troop leader holds out straws to you and the others. Draw the left straw. You feel the Whoops, short sorry, I skipped some of that. Shout, Kin it. You know what that means. A lonely traipse in the cold dark. You dawdle and grumble all the way, sobering as you find the overturned caravan. Massacre. Your lantern reveals ravaged corpses in every direction. Inhaling sharply, you smell a thick black stench you remember secondhand from the few void woken corpses your troops have found. Sniff the air for danger, the void woken still here. As you approach a dark thicket, the stench grows stronger. In a flash of void and blood, a claw rakes savage stripes across your guts. As Kinnit dies, all goes black. Staggering back from Kinnit's deathly grasp, only your own blood now pumps through your heart. With your living eyes, you see him trembling in front of you, desperately holding out three straws. Reach out and take all the straws from Kinnit. As you pluck the short straw from his hands, Kinnit weeps with relief. His wound disappears in turn, and he's restored to the model image of a strapping young soldier. He looks around, then looks at you, and then he smiles. Smiling broadly, Kinnit fades away. I like that little story. And these two yelling History. at each other. <laughs> History is written by victors. The spirits of a magister and a dwarf are locked in ethereal combat. Their vicious blows make no impact, yet they struggle on. Mid snarl, the dwarf spies your presence and staggers back to address you. Uh, also, I've noticed that spirit vision isn't taking source. I don't know if that's. It's possible that was always the case, but I was sure that Spirit Vision took Source, because it was really dumb. And I thought that there was a, a mod that you could use that would actually prevent it, but maybe they've just implemented it into the main game now. Which, if so, that's amazing. Uh, the Spirit of a Magister and a Dwarf, uh, yep. Okay. Sorcerer! You must hate the Reds as much as I do, eh? Certainly no friend of Magisters. Rightly so. Reds had Sorcerers locked up tight in that caravan. And you know where they were sending them. You look like you've been there yourself. Indeed. The Magister lunges for the Dwarf, his exasperation clear. Anna, you saw it with your own eyes. You know Sorcerer's Law, Voidwoken, and you know we'd all still be alive if you hadn't attacked our caravan. Um... So the police know the dwarves of this area are so fond of sorcerers. Not to flip your flocks or nothing, 
but tis more that my boss Lohar is against magisters than for sorcerers, if you know what I mean. Fair enough. The magister snorts in disdain. Lohar, I should have known. Sorcerer, if you want to stay alive around these parts, you'll stay far, far away from that walking vermin. Though, on the other hand, maybe you should go stand near him. Maybe the Void Woken could take him out where we failed. Ha! Ask him where you find this Loha. You were so inclined where well, you were so inclined to pay him a visit. The dwarf eyes you steadily and silently, his mouth a straight line, and his eyes like marbles of steel. The Magister shrugs. Well, if I knew that, we'd have taken him out long ago. All I can say is, he's somewhere in Driftwood, and everything he touches turns into annihilation. I don't see any sorcerer bodies, where are they? Before. 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 Hmm. Before it all, Voidwoken stole the sorcerers along the cliffs, headed for seven knows where. Tilda Murray told the Magister and Driftwood about the wrecked caravan. The Magister's shoulders collapse with relief. His burden lifted, his spirit slowly fades to nothingness before your eyes. We tried to help your kind, and you'll help those who enslaved you? You're a wrong and a no mistake. I've little to say to one who parleys with Magisters. Yes, indeed, that'd be you. Fair enough. Hey, Cal. The bull lazily chews non-existent card. It registers your presence. Well, guess I should have seen that coming. <laughs> I love the animals. Um, ask it what it ask it what it should have seen coming. Nine, of course. As soon as they sent me pulling that there wagon, I should have known this was how things was going to end. Of course, I can see the future, and I did see this, but I honestly thought I was sleeping. Offer your condolences. Well, that's nice of you. It's not so bad so far. I sure don't miss pulling wagons. Ask if you can see my future. You sure you want to know? I want to know my future. Alright. Here is your future. The bull shakes itself, swallows the card, clears its throat. You're gonna die. Ask when. Uh, let me think about that now, too. Yeah. Hmm. Uh... Okay, right, here we go. So, <laughs> me. The bull shrugs. Here. Yeah. I don't suppose you could do me a favor on its this here army so as I can make my way to the field of echoes. Reach out and unhitch the bull's ghostly harness. The bull nods its thanks and gently fades away. I knew you'd say yes. <laughs> Some. Random ass bull who believes he can see the future. Um, kind of weird. Alright, so we've now spoken to the ghosts there, which gives me a, a little bit more insight into what's going on there. I happen to know where Lohar is. Um, I'm not sure whether or not I've been told where he is. I think I actually have. I think Magister Raymond vaguely knew where they were. But he he sort of told us they're holed up underneath the the tavern in Driftwood. But interesting that he does know where they are and he's decided not to directly attack them. But to be fair, it's their stronghold. It would be attacking into their into their advantage. There was a fast travel point I could have gone to there. I don't know why I didn't. But a couple of things actually. What I should probably also do. Startles, realizing there's a stranger in his midst. What do you want, lizard? You can't just come in here as you please. There's Manchester's missing. I'm trying to conduct a bloody investigation. Um, <laughs> Scowl and say that in the ancient empire, you can go where you please. You don't have to enter some jumped up fishing port bureaucrat. This isn't the ancient empire, serpent. Now answer my bloody question. What are you doing here? 
Say that you were supposed to meet someone in town, you must have been in the wrong building. Well, mind your bloody step in future. I've an investigation to carry out, and I don't need any more distractions. Say that if this investigation is so important, you ought to be out there leading it in a person. I'm not some foot soldier, you clod. I can't put myself at risk. We've lost three of our number to this hig of a fiend so far. I won't move from here until he's in a cell or in a box. That's as if there's a reward for catching the fugitive. Catching, killing, I don't care. There'll be gold for whoever puts an end to this rat. If you see anything, tell me or my men at once. Otherwise, keep the hell out of our way. Raise the subject of the disappearances. Well, do you know anything? Eh, nothing to report now. Stop wasting my time then. I'm watching you, stranger. Um. Surrounded by Casually mention that you've heard there's still some powerful sorcerers on the loose in this region. Magister business. Keep your nose out of it. All right. Elsa, my inkwell is cool, dry. Sir. Fetch me some more. right away. Nothing particularly of use here. Um, I believe there is a book somewhere that I can find that'll tell me about the other sorcerers. Silent watches. The Magister turns to you with a scowl. He already seemed immensely displeased, and your interjection isn't improving his mood. Indeed. What? Ask him why he's in such a foul mood. The Magister glances at you like you're something he just stepped in. <laughs> Keep out of it! Shrug and say the problem shared is a problem halved. I'll halve you with my sword if you don't mind your own business. Try flattery and ask why a formidable Magister such as he has been regulated to such menial duties. That's what I want to know. Stuck here with those silent things. The new leadership ought to learn to respect its veterans. We're the ones who uphold the rule of law, not white ponches like Raymond and Jonathan. Express your sympathies and suggest that perhaps he'll get reassigned soon. A sly smile creeps across the Magister's face. Aye, and sooner than you might think, if the rumours are true. Let's just say, there's other places where I'd be appreciated more than I am in Driftwood. Um... So you've, he's piqued your curiosity. What is this other place that he'd be more appreciated? The Magister loses some of his bluster. I... I ain't saying. It's a secret for loyal members of the Divine Order only. Tell him you should leave then and join up with wherever this venture is. Who asked you? You're not even supposed to be down here. Um... Uh, so this place seems secure enough. He won't be missed. Damn it. <laughs> Keep out of it. <laughs> um, the reason I wanted him out of here is in here is a way down into where I want to go. Um, having said that, I can get down there the normal way, so it's not that much of an issue. <laughs> but if you can convince him to leave, it's it makes things simple. Uh, to get into the tavern the way you want to go. Keep your eyes peeled for a dream. Bravos the Wanderer promised he'd be here. I'm telling you, if you've got nothing to hide, I've got Hello. The spirit of a magister stares dumbly at her translucent hand, the fingers of which have been sheared off. Hmm. My ring. Where's my ring? Say that you know Magister have gone missing lately, is she one of them? The spirit looks at you with the smallest flicker of realisation. I was still alive when she started cutting pieces off me. She wanted me to feel it. All of it. Ask who she is. Who killed her? The spirit inclines her head towards the kitchen. Hmm. Say that her body hasn't been found, does she know where it might be? The spirit ponders your question and seems to shiver. 
In many places. I feel my body mm. in a hundred moving graves. Warm and wet. In stomachs, perhaps. So, someone in the kitchen killed her. And uh, she feels her body in many a... Uh, uh, Many a, a moving grave, as she puts it. Hello. Tell him you're looking for someone named Loha. He grins unpleasantly. Loha didn't tell me to let any blushing scale face in, so why should I? <laughs> Rub your fingers together in the universal symbol for bribery. <laughs> you can't buy my friendship. But you can buy ten seconds of me eyeballs examining the ground for, let's say, a small fortune. You look like you'd be good for it. And for more than you think this is worth, checking your head at the checkdown. He pockets the coin and gazes dramatically at the ground, mere inches from your feet. Easy enough. I've spotted something. Cool. Well, I just made back my money. That's something, I guess. Look at that. A fresh face. Shrewd and sophisticated. What do you want? Boss is busy. You're on business. Good. Boss could use some good news. Listen up. Don't waste his time. These are explosive times. Be respectful. Fair enough. I brought you up from girl to woman, Marla. Like you was my own. He lifts his right arm, showing a white bandage beneath his ribs. A wet red spot shows through. This ain't the thanks I expected. Who sent you? <laughs> The formidable dwarf slams his fist on the side table. You hear a loud crack. Enough! Do you know they killed Anna? Do ya? Start talking sense or I'll take that tongue right out of your mouth and fry it for supper. Bart! Kate! Get her to talk or bleed her out. She ain't one of mine anymore. His sneer travels from the restrained dwarf to you. And you. You better have a damn good reason for coming here. He sells some good stuff, actually. I do. Hey, Loha. Brave lad. All sitting here now. I hope for your sake you've got good news for me. Just to do the dwarf in front of, uh, in front of the room and ask what happened between them. Family matter. She's one of mine. Acting like her brains are scrambled, though. Came after me with a knife. Hmm. Lucky for me, she caught an old wound. Scar slowed down the knife. Hmm. So. Thicker skin. Um. <laughs> Smile broadly and regale him with the tail. <laughs> I've got to say I'm impressed. I love a good story. Here's one I heard lately. A group of strangers landed on the beaches outside town. Meister Seavers people. You one of her little seekers? Chasing him down Godwoken and begging him to save us all. Tell him you're one such Godwoken, he can start begging any time. That's so. He leans back and narrows his eyes, looking you up and down. You know, the order's been going on about Godwoken for an eon now. Voidwoken's still lurking, though. And it's still all in folks off to the joy. Makes a fair point. So if you are who you say you are, what's the point of you? Um, tell him you might be able to stop all this, the void work in Fort Joy, but not yet. You need information first. Ah, I should have guessed. I could help you. But last I heard you was working for the Magisters. Big shots at the boats. Now, why in the name of all the Earths would I help a worm like that? Tell him it's always best to keep your enemies close. 
An unpleasant smirk twitches around the corners of his mouth. Right. I reckon I could help you out. Depending on what you can do for me. Um... Ask him what he has in mind. He gestures towards the bandage across his side. Had a bit of family trouble lately. My girl Marla got it in her head to come after me with a short blade. That ain't like Marla. Ain't like her to pull the silent treatment either. Something's going on. Mm. And wouldn't you know it, that blade she used wasn't any normal bit of steel. Belonged to another of my people. Guy's name is Mordus. Bit of a loner, but smart as hell. Hmm. I sent a few guys to go check on him, see if he knew what had got into Marla, but no one can find him. I'd like a word with the guy. Ask if he expects Mortis to survive that particular conversation. That'd be up to him, wouldn't it? No one's Fair seen enough. him in a good few. I've got some people checking out his house near the tavern now, though. Tell them I sent you, and they'll let you know what they've found. Truth Ask is, they might be glad to see you. Reckon a sorcerer will have better luck finding one of their own. Hmm, he's a sorcerer. Um, ask if there's anything else you should know. Well, like I said, Maldus is a special guy. A sorcerer, matter of fact. Maybe even one of the ones Seaver's after. If there's something you want to find out from him, you might want to ask before I have my word with him. Fair enough. Here, you can take this off my hands. More suited to your kind, really. Good luck. Cool. Better get out there before Maldus makes it all the way past Arx. Say so there's something else you'd like to discuss. All right. Um, I came across a wrecked caravan at our town. It looked like some of his people were involved. That's right. Lost one of my best lads, Anhar. Didn't get Jalia's body back, though. Maybe one of them beasts took her like they did the sorcerers. So you met her out there. She survived, but seemed traumatized. She ran off. That's... Well, I reckon that's good news. P poor thing. She'll be back in time. She and Anhar were sweethearts. So you spoke to Anhar's spirit. He seemed concerned about getting soul-forged weapons out of a cave. Bloody lad. Flapping his gums in the next life, too. That's another little venture of ours. Don't concern you, though. That's why he doesn't go and get the bodies of the fallen. We will, once the Reds turn down the alarm a bit. They're jumpy as all hell for the moment. Won't do anyone any good to raise a ruckus now. That makes sense. What exactly does he do here in Driftwood? Whatever needs doing. Isn't that obvious? <laughs> Um, so you've heard a thing about a string of murders against magisters in Driftwood. Do you know anything about it? Don't insult me. I wouldn't expose my people like that. <laughs> I wasn't actually I accusing you, but... It. Shake their hand for me. Fair enough. So, we're now in dealings with the mob boss, and technically the magisters as well. We actually have dealings with both of them now. Um... I'm going to come down here, the reason being there's a dreamer there for me to talk to. But I want to come down here because... There is a teleport here, so I can now fast travel in between these parts, which is quite useful. Um, I'm gonna, actually going to go to the square for now. But that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, I think, yeah, we're about 25 minutes in. I'm actually going to walk a bit away from the square though, so I don't have all these people talking. Um, makes it a bit nicer. So you can hear me and not all the people discussing random shit in the market. But that's going to be it for this um, episode. If you like the video, please leave a like. If you're not subscribed already, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching and I shall see you next time. Where I guess we're going to head off and try and solve Mortis's problems. I'll think about it. There's a few other things I potentially want to do, like up here first. But Mortis, by the way we've played this, Mortis is the most logical progression. So I think I might head that, excuse me, I might head that direction first. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.